Welcome to this week's edition of Church Media Design TV, tips, tricks, and how-to for you, the church media designer. I'm your host, Brad Zimmerman, and I'm joined by my favorite bobble-headed friends. You got it right. We got Sean and Gus from Psych. We got Little Whitey, the miniature version of me, Colonel Sanders, the king of chicken, and of course, Jesus Christ, the son of the Lord Most High. Well, on this week's edition of Church Media Design TV, we're going to be talking about audio, specifically audio you get on video shoots and how to clean up sometimes pretty crappy audio as well as how to get better audio while you're out on a shoot as well as I'm going to give you guys a bunch of great resources some free stuff and a great piece of inspiration so if my bobble-headed friends are ready let's get into it well let's reach into the stockpile and grab you guys some great resources from around the web and the first one is a interactive prayer wall for your church called the prayer engine now this has just been released um, it's a great interactive tool you can use it on the go it's got social integration uh, it doesn't take very long to implement you can use CSS from your own site to make it fit um, as well as if you want to find out more information you can uh, read the write-up at churchcrunch.com uh, they had a write-up on this and they're actually using this as their prayer wall at the 8-bit network so uh, it's something to check out it might be a great way to uh, use this for your church and it also uh, has some privatization features to make sure that things don't go too public and does mailing lists and a whole nine yards so make sure to check that out the next thing is DIY lighting tips from aetuts.com or aetuts.net I can't remember what it is anyway they had quick tips of doing a DIY lighting shoot for under a hundred bucks that's pretty much what we do here on Church Media Design TV it's a great video uh, talking about that. Um, I think their backlight, if you watch the video, I think their backlight is way too bright. It looks really, really cheesy. It almost looks fake. And you can see in this photo here that he's got such a strong halo um, that he needed to diffuse that a little bit more. Anyway, but they also had another one on how to create an overhead uh, lighting rig for different scenes, and uh, just a very interesting idea. And the last resource, of course, is some free stuff for you. We're talking about sound today, and I've been using this website a lot. It's called SoundJ, and it's got tons of free um, free sounds to use. You just can't um, save them and link them on your own website, but you can use these in your videos. And uh, it's just a great, great site. So make sure to check out uh, soundj.com, quick tips on lighting from A Tuts, and of course, the prayer engine. Let's take a moment to say thank you to our sponsors of Floodgate Productions, mini movies and media for you and your church. And check out a quick clip of one of their new mini movies all about him. Today you're going to see people on the stage singing and making music, speaking, praying, and teaching. These people are talented, these people are beautiful, and we love these people. But you got to know something. Now you can find that mini movie and many more at their website floodgateproductions.com as well as I want to encourage you guys to click on the free resources link and what you're going to find is that you're going to get two free mini movies, a worship background loop and a series package. So make sure to check out that and help us out by checking out our sponsors. Our next sponsor is Print Management Solutions. You've been hearing about them for a while now but I really want to encourage you guys to check them out. They have the answer to your print needs so whether it be a full service program or leasing or ink and toner, whatever it may be, it's going to save you a lot of money. And so I want to encourage you guys to check out Print Management Solutions and Floodgate Productions. Well, like I said at the top of the show, we're going to be talking about audio today and specifically audio from your video shoots. Now, a lot of times we're going out, out on video shoots and a lot of us are getting better at shooting footage, but the audio becomes a problem. Now, it's really easy just to slap a song on it and make a montage and not worry about any of the audio that's recorded, but when you want to do interviews or you want to make little mini movies, audio becomes very, very important. And I've been learning this in this past series that we're in. It's called Flash Forward, and it's a take off the TV show, which I normally 
personally absolutely hate, but this one has turned out to be fun. And uh, we got two guys that are doing these funny flash forward videos as well as during the teaching, our teacher is doing on the scene uh, sermon illustration videos. So uh, it's kind of Numa-esque, but pretty straightforward, basically one or two shots and he shares you know, three to six minutes worth of uh, information on location to help bring a point home. So I've been doing a lot of editing to say the least bit, and I've been doing all of this in about two to three days. I shoot on Wednesday and Thursday and have the, all the videos done by Friday. So it's kind of a crazy time crunch that we're in, but it's working out okay. And some of it's because of the ease of use, but to get a better picture, check out this flash forward video. Previously on Flash Forward. Dude, I just blacked out again and I'm gonna catch a virus. Man, you're a loser. Everyone's gonna know that unless you get me, Arthur, your antivirus software. All right. On February 24th, Brad Arena blacked out. And only Brad Arena blacked out. Do you understand me? Did you black out? I didn't black out. Brad Arena alone blacked out for 14 and a half seconds and saw his future. So Brad, uh, spring break in a week, you pumped? I mean, I, I was pumped, but uh, I had spent all my money on Arthur's antivirus. Perfect, well, is it working? I mean, it's so far so good, but I've only had it for like a day, so I'm still kind of seeing. Oh, it's working. Uh, no pop-ups, no nothing? No, no. pop-ups yet, but like I said, one day could see what happens in the future. Okay, well, we'll see what we can do about spring break. Can I get you guys anything? I'll take a milk sh Is he okay? <sighs> this happens all the time. I'm just gonna have a water. Oh, what's up, Mike? Dude, what are you doing? Oh, you know, the usual, just reading. Dude, have you checked the TV or on it? What? What channel? And you're back. So, uh, what's it this time? Dude, you were actually in my vision this time. I, You call me and you see me on TV. It sounds like I'm going to be famous. That sounds like something good. I mean, finally, right? Yeah. Desperate Housewives is back. Chuck Talk Tie from Ford. We're going to send it out to Clive on location. This is Clive Westenhouse coming to you live from downtown Grand Haven, where you can see the roads are quite slippery today. They're hoping next year with the new heated streets that this won't be an issue anymore. Now back to you in the studio. Clive, what's going on behind you? Oh, that's gross. Get a shot of that. Yeah, it looks like he's really digging in there. There must be a bat in the cave. Oh, looks like even the, the kids downtown don't like him. There's lots of mayhem Brad, dude, going on I'm, downtown. I'm sitting Grand here Haven watching right the news now. and you're on it. Let's send it back to the studio. Well, as you can see there, that was our flash forward video for uh, one of our weeks. And uh, it's kind of funny, kind of not, whatever you think. But anyway, that's what we've been showing. And uh, I'm pretty proud of the quality that I can get out in such a short amount of time. 
Now, some of that is due to my workflow. I use Adobe Premiere Pro and I use the Adobe Creative Suite. And the reason I use this, I can use it on Mac and PC. I edit on a uh, PC, but I also do sometimes do editing on a Mac and we use Macs on Sunday mornings. I'm a pretty equal opportunist when it comes to that. But the nice thing is, uh, you know, Final Cut Suite you can't use on a PC. And so if you trade off footage with somebody else anyway, you have to be on the same platform. So I prefer the Adobe Suite, because there's also great workflow between programs. So we're gonna start inside Premiere, but we could go to After Effects or we could go to um, Sound Booth, which is the sound editing program that comes with, uh, with the Adobe Creative Suite. Now, one thing that I will say is that I am not a sound expert. I I'm showing you what it takes to get your sound sounding good in a short amount of time so that you can produce videos. I'm not going to help you mix your next album. I'm not going to help you get the most professional uh, audio by the, at the end of the day. I'm going to help you get the job done. So with that being said, let's jump inside Premiere Pro. So as you can see here, I've shot this footage on my HVX 200. And if we hit the tilde key or the tilde key and pull up our, our uh, sequence here, you can see that I get four tracks of audio. Now, um, let's listen to one of these clips here. So, so Brad, uh, spring break. And you can hear we have what we got going on there. Now, I've actually removed these other tracks already. Now, in another clip uh, of our teacher here, and we'll uh, make it so you can see him. You can. We're here in my doctor's office. You can see the clip that we have there, and we also have these other two channels that the camera picks up. Now, I love this about my camera because I can plug in two microphones, but always it's recording the uh, on-camera mics so that maybe if my mics go bad or something happens, I at least have a fallback. It sounds terrible. Listen to it. We're here in my doctor's office. And Pretty bad. So uh, it's not something that you would want to use, but it's there just in case. So... Let's jump back over to this uh, this shot of Mike and Brad here, and you saw this in the video. So they're sitting at the soda fountain, and you can hear a couple things here. So I'm just going to trim this clip up uh, to where I want it, and we're just going to mess around with just this small clip here. So what I'm going to do is I am going to right click and do edit in Adobe Sound Booth, and this is the ease of the workflow. And I'm going to do render and replace. Now the uh, Panasonic camera renders uh, its footage in an MXF format and the audio from that format can't be viewed natively inside Sound Booth or even After Effects. You have to put it into another format. So what just happened there is it rendered out that clip as a WAV file and then brought it inside Sound Booth here. Now, before I jump in Sound Booth, I want to tell you a little bit about the history of the, the Creative Suite from my point of view. Now, Adobe Creative Suite is in CS4 right now. I'm using CS3. In CS1 and CS2, it included a program called Adobe Audition. Now, this was their answer to sound editing. Now, this was similar to programs like, uh, like uh, Pro Tools. And the Pro Tools people out there will say, Brad, you're an idiot. It's nothing like Pro Tools. Pro Tools is way better. Well... Anyway, you're probably right, but that's what they put in, and it did a great job. It's a great multi-track editor. You could do MIDI inside of it and a whole bunch of other things. I really enjoyed this program. Then CS3 came out, and no more Audition. It was gone, and they replaced it with Sound Booth. And I opened it up, and I saw what we're seeing here. One track of audio, a few buttons, and I was ticked. I was like, this is a pile of junk. Who would ever use this program? But then I started to let Adobe evangelize me and I understood why they made this program the way they did. And the way they made this program was for people like me who needed to clean up audio and clean it up fast and then get back to post-production and editing and all of the things that we enjoy doing because we're not audio professionals, we're video guys, but we need to care about audio. So that's what Adobe Sound Booth does. So, it is limiting in uh, CS4, it's gotten better, but uh, I don't have that, so I'm not gonna show it to you. But I will show you what both of the programs will do, and that's clean up your audio. So let's listen to our clip here. So Brad, uh, spring break in a week, you pumped? I mean, I... 
So you can hear in the background we got a lot of noise of machines going on and we have uh, some water trickling in the background from a soda fountain and we want to get rid of as much of that as possible. Now when I go on video shoots I use a condenser mic on a stand and I put that as close as I can to the actors. Now if I had resources for multiple people I would have a guy holding the mic with headsets on and, and moving the mic side to side to get the best audio possible but I don't so I use a mic on a stand and just make sure it's not my shot and for the most part it works out really well and that's what I did with this one but let's uh, let's so let's clean up this audio so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna select a region of sound right here at the beginning that is just background noise this is nothing else we're gonna do capture noise print then we're gonna select the entire thing and we're gonna do noise and this brings up our noise reduction settings. Now, most likely when you first open it up, it'll be at zero, zero, and you can hit preview, and it sounds exactly the same. But what we can do is we can start messing with these uh, sliders, and we can tell it, do we want to do light or aggressive reduction, and how much do we want to reduce it by? So let's just go 50-50 right in the middle, and we'll hit preview. So Brad, uh, and you can hear that background water sound gets a really weird. It sounds like it's in a tunnel, but our vocals sound really good and they're pretty much untouched. So Brad, uh, spring break in a week. And they pump. really, really stick out. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn my aggressiveness way up. So Brad, uh, spring break and you can hear that his vocals are starting to get touched a little bit. So I'm just going to pull down my reduce by to maybe about 10 and I'm going to turn my aggressiveness maybe down to like 90 and now I'll preview it. So Brad, uh, spring break in a week you pumped. Are and you what up? you can hear there is now we've reduced the background noise by a lot and we've still kept the vocals intact. So I'm just going to hit OK. And you can, you can see a visual difference between the two here. So let's listen to the original of his voice. So Brad, uh... And now let's listen to the new one. So Brad, uh... Sounds the same, but we've gotten rid of a lot of background noise. So Brad, uh... And we'll listen to it one more time so you can hear so Brad, that uh, difference. Spring break and... So that's really cleaned it up. Now the next thing we're going to do is jump over to our effects panel. Now our effects panel has an effects rack and you can open up these different racks and they have all these different things, but I don't really like any of this stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to right click and I'm going to look at all of the effects that are possible. So we have delay and dynamics and EQ and mastering and all this stuff. But if we pull up, like let's pull up this graphic EQ and we hit the settings you get four bands, much like a soundboard, but we want more than just four bands. So let's delete that. So let's pull up, you know, a parametric EQ and we pull up the settings. There's just a slider. These are terrible effects, but they've included advanced effects, which in my opinion should be called regular effects. So let's look at the regular effects and you can see in here we have our graphic EQ and now we have between 10 and 30 bands of EQ that we can mess with. But I found that I really don't like having to mess with every single individual one. So what I'm gonna do is a parametric EQ. And uh, again, I'm no audio expert, but I enjoy this one because it uses curves instead of individual faders and it's a lot easier to manipulate our sound. So what we're gonna do is let's back this up and let's mess so around had, with our uh, sound. Spring break in a week, you pumped? I mean, I'm gonna push up uh, some of our mid lows here and so Brad, uh, spring break in a week, you pumped? I mean, I and you can hear that we're starting to get a little bit crisper sound, uh, and we can mess around this. So Brad, uh, spring break in a week, you pumped? So we can mess around with that for hours, but again, I want to pull that audio and make the vocals pop as much as possible. And then I can just close this out and I can hit save. And the cool thing is when I go back inside um, Premiere Pro here, it's reloaded that clip for me. So I don't have to re-import it or anything. So Brad, uh, spring break and, and it's week, working. I mean, I was pumped, but... Uh... And you can hear this is the transition from our new clip to our, our unedited clip and just listen to how much worse it used to sound. I mean, I... 
I was pumped, but uh, I had to spend all my money on another no, it's, a, it's a little more present sounding, but for the Thank most part. I mean, I, I was pumped, but uh, people aren't going to notice that. So um, that's just a little bit there. But now let's say, well, but Brad, I have really horrible audio. I didn't do a good job capturing it. And I can agree with you because I convinced the girl who works at the soda fountain to be a part of our video. And in trying to not waste her time and you know let her work with customers, I didn't set up a good mic and I didn't get good audio levels. And listen to how horrible this sounds. Can I get you guys anything? Do you hear all that white noise and we got background sounds that just sound terrible? So again, I'm gonna unlink my footage. I'm gonna do render and replace and bring this inside sound booth. But let's watch the magic. So we'll just capture our noise print. So capture noise print and do the whole thing and do noise. We're going to shove the aggressiveness all the way up and preview it. Can I get you guys anything? And it actually doesn't sound too terrible. So we can even reduce it some more. Can I get you guys anything? Can I get a milk? Shh. Now on her voice it sounds good, but you can hear how it sound, okay? sounds bad on the other people's voices. Something? Listen to Brad here. Milk. You can hear how it sounds bad, but luckily I'm using his vocals from another clip. And then I can go in here and I can actually uh, level this out. So I could use the volume meter here to pull up the volume so that I could even hear her better. Can I get you guys anything? And that sounds actually pretty good. Um, it's a little overdone, but she's going to be on the on the uh, camera for such a short amount of time that it's not like you're sitting and listening only to her vocals sound crappy for 20 minutes. It's only going to sound bad for a few seconds. So um, you can level it out that way. You also can um, normalize the sound by clicking this button, and it normalizes it. And you can even apply a hard limit. Um, and can I get you guys anything? It's really loud. That actually hurt my ears to listen to. So uh, those are two different ways to do that. But one thing I want to try get rid of and I'll show you is you can hear there's a weird sound in there of a chair moving. And I'm actually going to pull up my visual representation and we can select individual frequencies. So that's really highs and this is like low tones. Can I get you guys anything? And we're just previewing that, but we can actually uh, go down to uh, remove a sound and we can use different things. So we could go in here and we could select this box of sound. Can I get a and that was our sound of that chair. What we're going to do is we could use this or we could go in and draw our lasso around it uh, just to get a little bit finer detail. I'm just doing this really quickly. So we could do that, and now we can use this auto heal feature. Now the auto heal feature works like a the photo Photoshop um, brush healing feature, where it uses pixels around it to um, uh, manipulate the image where inside of it, and it's doing the same thing inside here. It's going to use the sound that surrounds our selection to heal this area. So I'm going to select that, and I'm going to hit auto heal, and. There we go. And you can notice that it's pretty much gone, but if we listen to it, can I get a you can hear that it uh, it didn't like dip the sound out. Now if we would have done this and just taken our volume all the way down to like 96, which is nothing, and uh, deselected, uh, deselected that, you can see hard edges there and listen to this. Can I get a you hear that really low dip? So let's... um. Let's do this again. Let's use our marquee, our square marquee though. So let's uh, auto heal. And let's listen back to this. So. Can I get a and you can hear how it's can I get a basically gone. So that's a way to get rid of different sounds. You could also use this to get rid of really high sounds or low rumble by just, you know, you can hear a little bit of a low rumble there and we could get rid of that via our just uh, pulling the levels down on that so we can save this clip out and again it's gonna bring it right back inside uh, Premiere for us can so I get that you guys it's anything? ready to use 
that's basically the, the tool set for sound booths. So now let's talk about some ways to get some good audio. Now one thing I would suggest is to find a good microphone and not use your on-camera mics. I've talked about this in the past, but you can pick up a Beach Tech adapter. And what this does is a, I wish I had mine here, but I forgot it. Um, it's a dual XLR input that goes into the stereo mic input on your camera. Most cameras have a stereo mic, the eighth inch headphone size uh, jack, and you can plug that in there, but it converts it into two XLR mics so that you can you know, plug in two microphones and it puts it in the left and right channel. And that makes it so you can hook up your nice microphones to get better audio. The next thing I would do is get a good condenser mic and get a good windscreen for it. This is one thing that I don't have, but you can do a cheap windscreen by like throwing a glove or a towel around that microphone, um, and that's an easy way to block some of the wind from it. But using a good condenser mic, then you can have your mic far away from your person. They don't have to have anything on them, but they still will get good audio for you. You could also get a lav pack, but those are pretty expensive to get fully wireless lav packs. Those are, you know, over $200 for the cheapest one up to you know around a thousand for the quality one so that's a decent investment for you the last thing I would say is you know you got your you're able to plug your microphones in if it's important to get good audio forget about the microphone forget about worrying if the microphones in or out of your shot Audio is much more important than video a lot of times. It, it makes the difference. In that video you saw, it's only funny because some of the audio I used. And so if somebody has to hold a microphone and talk into it, it's much better than trying to, you know, not have a microphone in the scene and you hear all this terrible noise and it doesn't sound good. I would encourage you to put that mic in the scene. Those are just a few quick tips about how to shoot better, um, but just make sure to take the time. Invest in getting good actors and good people that you can spend the time, make sure they know how long it's going to take so you don't feel rushed so that you can spend the time to get good audio on your shots because it's going to make your job a whole lot easier in the end. So that's a little bit about Sound Booth. If you have any more questions or want to know about other programs, make sure to leave a comment on the website or shoot me an email. Well, this week's inspiration is a great video from Port City Church, and this is a promo about a hundred reasons why you shouldn't be a part of a small group or a life group or whatever you want to call it. Now, the reason I'm showing this clip is because it's a good illustration of some of the stuff that I show every single day on our website, churchmediadesign.tv. I've been showing a lot of inspiration that's inspiration from these great, huge companies that have 20 people working on these clips for a month and you're one person most of the time and you usually have one week or two or three days to make something. And so I want to feature some of the best stuff coming out of churches so you guys can be inspired of like, hey, that's a great idea. Or maybe you want to see if Port City will let you buy this from them to use at your church because it's such a great promo. Um, so check out this video clip and be inspired as to what's going on in local churches just like yours. Why don't you want to be in a small group? I just don't have time. I got a wife, a kid, a dog, a job, a house. How am I supposed to do something else during the week? I already go to church on Sunday. Do I really need to do more than that? Sometimes, I don't even think I believe in God. So a small group seems like the last place I'd want to be. Isn't that where you tell people your personal stuff? I don't need people talking about me behind my back. I don't want to sit in a room with a bunch of guys talking about my feelings. That's what chicks do. Let's face it, there's lots of reasons not to be in a small group. I already have hundreds of friends on Facebook. Isn't that community? So what's yours? Well, this week's freebie is another freebie that I've made, and I am not going to say that this is impressive by any means. I want to give you guys something, but at the same point, I've been exploring and taking inspirational ideas and writing them down of new background ideas and that kind of stuff and figuring out how to recreate them. So what you see behind you is uh, inspired by fathom events that you see before your movies most of the time, and they had this weird honeycomb wall. So I went to their website and found 
found a photo of it and I recreated what I thought looked like this wall. Now, um, the interesting thing was I used the shape tool inside After Effects and made this with one shape layer and a bunch of repeaters that repeated this whole thing. And then I did some color changing just to add a little bit more interest to it. So um, you can download this in widescreen and in full screen from the website and check out all the other freebies that are there. But again, I'm not saying this is my best work, but I've been just messing around and trying to do some new stuff. So make sure to check that out and download it today. Well, thanks for tuning in to another edition of Church Media Design TV. Hopefully you learned a little something about audio, learned about Sound Booth and how to do audio correction quickly and easily so that you don't have to waste time on it. Because uh, that's the worst thing is when you feel like you're just sitting wasting time trying to get something easy done. So um, make sure to send me questions or comments if you want to know more about how to do this in other programs like Audacity. Please send me those comments so I can know if that's something you guys want to know about as well as check out the Creative Suite. I really think it's a good choice for a lot of churches. You know, it's Mac and PC, it's a really affordable price, and it really does get the job done of what you need to get done in your church every single week. So, as for me and my bobble-headed friends, we're saying, see you later.